people want to help you. People want to see other people be successful and to feel like they're a part of that. And so I think that's been my biggest takeaway as I kind of think through my career is people latch on to like, if they give you advice and you become successful, they take a piece of that and they feel your success with you. everyone. I am Melissa Forzia of Take the Donut, here to help you get inspiration and get donuts. I'm a motivational keynote speaker, and today I'm bringing you a Take the Donut interview with Carolyn Carlson, who is the Vice President of Enterprise Sales Central and East at Okta. Carolyn, welcome to your Take the Donut interview. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about our, our chat today. Me too. And, you know, we'll get into more goal setting and goal oriented questions. But first, I have to ask the obligatory question. What is your favorite donut? So this one, my um, one of my colleagues and I were talking about this and, and my actual answer is donut holes, which I'm not sure what that says about me, but that's the actual true story answer. Um, and we that sort of segued into a time when I went to the donut store to buy them and it's when I got the bag, I opened it up and the owner had just ripped up glazed donuts and gave me donut pieces <laughs> instead of donut holes, um, which was kind of a sad disappointment. But um, it's like a similar idea, but just far enough away from the what same. you meant. <laughs> it is not the same at all. It is just not. So, yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's a lot of learning that person had to do. In life. There was a lot, a little bit. He'd run low and he's like, this is, this is what you asked for. Like, it's, it's not anywhere near what Slight I asked twist for. to the left of what I asked for. Exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh Great. man. Sure is. You know, we don't get a lot of uh, donut hole answers here. I like that so much. It's uh, and they're deceptive because it's like, how many did I really eat? Right. How many did I eat? <laughs> and it just, and so when I was thinking about that metaphorically, it was, um, I, you know, I have, a lot of just different interests that are wholly owned, but the whole bag kind of makes up the whole mouthful of donuts. So. Oh, that's a really nice way to look at that. So I said just a little bit about you up front, but tell us more about yourself. What should we know about you? Um, so I've been in technology my whole career, which is since the early nineties, which is hard to believe and have just been really blessed with a variety of roles at different companies that is just been an awesome career. Um, but I also have another side where I, I do a lot of nonprofit work, which is equally as important to me. And so I've just been fortunate enough to be able to have both sides of that equation. Um, I have two boys, they're grown, which is a whole new phase. One's um, 21, one's 24. So kind of getting used to them mostly being on their own. And, you know, what does that mean for me, right? Because so much of our identities are tied up with being a mom, being a wife, and those sorts of things. And now it's a different phase and a different relationship um, with them and with what my next chapter is. Uh, well, there's potentially a lot to unpack here, but let me reset this for everybody. This yeah. is a take the donut interview. And for me, take the donut is an expression that means the same as carpe diem. It all comes from this very strange thing that happened to me in college where I left an actual donut on the table, but it became an object lesson for me in what it looks like to leave an opportunity behind. So I don't want to do that anymore. I want to take the donut. And that's the mantra that I say to myself. I'll link a video here for those who haven't had a chance to see that full story. But basically, this conversation is all about going after the things that you want in life. Practically speaking, what does that look like? What does it feel like? So let me start with this question to you on that subject. How are you with going after goals? What is that process like for you? So it's really, it comes down to kind of defining for me what the, the boundaries are, right? So earlier in my career, my boundary was I wanted to have a fulfilling career that I could balance with my children. And so I had non-negotiables around that, right? So I wasn't going to move away from my support structure. I needed a job that allowed me to work remotely. So I wasn't doing a lot of time commuting and I wanted to be engaged in the work. And so that that was my boundary that was set. So then within that, what could, you know, what could awesome look like? And so that was really how I established goals for that. I wanted to lead a sales team. I wanted to move into from 
the semiconductor industry into public sector. So just setting odd kind of big goals and then breaking that down into bite-sized chunks of how to get there. And then also letting other people know what it was my goals were, right? Because no one gets there alone. So the more people that you involve in your process, the easier it is for them to have a connection or have advice or be able to help you get there sooner rather than just relying on your own process. You said something there that was an expression I really liked. What could awesome look like? Yeah. That that feels like a very open-minded, uh, open-ideated way to approach just moving towards progress. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to keep that with me. When you have a big goal or a big dream, something that you're going after that's going to take a while, a lot of effort, a lot of skill building, maybe some networking, what do you do to stay motivated in that process? So it's really, it comes down to like two things. One, what is your, you know, what value does it bring to you, right? It, it true, the big goals really should be aligned with your fundamental core values of what drives you and motivates you. So you don't really have to have external motivation. But then the other piece is really stopping and looking at what progress has been made towards that goal, because you can be in the grind of whatever that is and not really realize how much progress you've made. I do that with my teams all the time, right? Like we, we finish a quarter and everyone's like, oh gosh, that was, that was so hard. But then you spend some time reflecting on, well, yeah, but here are all the things that happened and you lose sight, kind of sight of that um, as you're looking towards the final end goal. Mm, absolutely. When So as you're going towards that end goal, a lot of times challenges come up, they come up for all of us, but I'm curious if there's any particular brand of challenge that just keeps rearing its ugly head with you, no matter what you're working on. It's like, is there an Achilles heel for you in yeah. challenges? So I think every, you're always going to have them and you're always going to get, get to the point of inflection where you're stuck. Um, with clients, I call this, um, I usually draw a, um, a chart that looks kind of like this, where Whenever we start an engagement, you're at the top, you're at the peak, everyone's happy and excited and, oh my gosh, this is going to be great. And then you go down until you get to kind of the pit of despair is what I call it. And, and so I just always want to set like, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be disappointments, but you will always come up from that. And so it's important to understand that and recognize that when you're in the pit of despair, as um, I call it, it's, there's a path out and it's going to take the team and all the excitement that you feel at the beginning to get you through that pit of despair back back on track. But it's I think it's really important to recognize that you're always going to get stuck at some point and you can't necessarily foresee what that point is. I like that. I think the idea of managing expectations is really helpful because then it doesn't take you by surprise and it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm failing because I reached this pit of despair. It's like, no, that's actually part of the process. And right. this is the part we have to move through to get to the success, to get to the end goal. So if you think back historically, personally or professionally, what's the biggest donut you've ever taken? I think, I know, actually, it was really, there. there's two, um, and they're kind of related. And it, it comes down to when I first entered the workforce from a career standpoint, I, I didn't really, this was, this was, there was very little flexibility at the time. Um, and then I wanted to raise a family and I didn't really recognize that there was a way to go and do both and do both in a way that you could be successful at both. And so I had actually, when I had my oldest son resigned, I'm like, well, I just, this is going to be too hard. I can't commute back and forth 45 minutes each way. And so I, right after maternity leave resigned and um, IBM is who I worked for at the time. And they said, no, 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 this was in year 2000, just work remotely, like, what? Right. Nobody did that. I had the dial up modem where you would like start just turn on your computer in the morning and like walk away for 15 minutes while it downloaded like 16 emails. But it just it was a whole different way of working that other people weren't doing. But it enabled me to shave an hour and a half, two hours off my day each day and just change kind of my whole trajectory of what I thought was possible of what work could be and how it could work both for me and the company. And then I was there for 18 years. I had a really nice stretch of career there and really good memories and friends. Mm, yeah. And, and a lot of, you know, you were innovating at the time and and now mm. it's like, it was the wave of the future, but 
who was to know that then? It's pretty interesting. A little, it was the whole thing. Might we just laugh about it now? Yeah. Is there a donut in progress for you? What donut are you taking right now? Right now, it's um, it's it's more well. My current job is um, is fantastic. It's it's a really fun role at Okta and just really progressing our technology with our client set. But outside of work, I'm working with uh, some of my friends to to launch a, a nonprofit around feeding um, previously um, underhoused people and providing them with with meals. So that's kind of our my next rep my next rock right now. So doing all the paperwork to be, become a launch a nonprofit and then how, what does funding look like and how do you go raise that? That's a huge one, yeah, but really rewarding, good. hopefully. And it's going to be good. Yeah. There could be li- people listening to this who have a donut of their own they want to take. Maybe they're in progress. They've already started, or maybe it's still ideation phase for them, but they're not sure what the next step is. So let's sprinkle some encouragement here. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to those people who have a thing they know they want to do and they're not quite sure how to get there? I would say get help, right? It takes, I think I said this earlier, it takes a community. People want to help you. People want to see other people be successful and to feel like they're a part of that. And so I think that's been my biggest takeaway as I kind of think through my career is people latch on to like, if they give you advice and you become successful, they take a piece of that and they feel your success with you. And so I would, I would just encourage people to one, understand exactly what it is they want, which is a whole nother topic. But then once that's defined, you know, let people know and, and let people know how specifically they can help you because more often than not, people will, will surprise you and really step up to that challenge. It's beautifully said. If there is anybody out there who wants to follow your journey or stay in touch with what you're up to, how can they find you? I'm I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not as prolific there as I probably should be. And then for the Okta people that are watching this, we were going to have a great event that you'll be um, the keynote of on June 6th. So stay tuned for that. Absolutely. Can't, I can't wait to speak to women at Okta for that event on June 6th. Oh, it's going to be a blast. Um, is there, is it too early to say anything about that nonprofit as well? Is that, some, is it it's still a little early, but it, yeah. it will be launched on my, um, on my LinkedIn page as well. Perfect. So that's where, if people were interested in what they heard there, yeah. just check out the LinkedIn profile and I'll make sure to link all of that in the description. So everybody be sure to check out those resources. And if you liked this video, be sure to like, and subscribe because we have plenty more inspirational interviews still to come. And in the meantime, Carolyn, thank you so much for taking a little time today and just talking through taking the donut and what it looks like to go after goals in your life. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And okay, everybody, you know what to do. Go out there, get inspiration and get donuts. Bye everyone.